Hi, I'm Pamela, and today's topic has been made of feathers, dipped in vegetables, and its first patent came again from a clever businessman, of course, an insurance broker from the US. And apparently, you can buy it in 22 karat gold. And, get this, it can be made invisible in a blink of an eye. Yes, you guessed it. This is the story behind the fountain pen and how the Egyptian kings took a small reed to embellish their stories that would live in history forever. Pen or computer? Computer. 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 Why? I don't know. <laughs> easier. <laughs> Computers is just a lot easier for me to put down what I want on the screen rather than on paper. More options, uh, you can store it, save it. Computer always like, give me the right answer. It's more uh, e efficiency. Easier. <laughs> Over the years, humans have used various instruments to convey thoughts and feelings. Man's first writing instrument was, wait for it, ready? His finger using it to form symbols in none other than the dirt. This was later replaced with pieces of metal or bone. Now, early Egyptians used hollow reeds as writing tools and papyrus as their writing surface, whilst the Greeks use a stylus to mark on wax-coated writing tablets. Now, during the Middle Ages, quill pens made from bird feathers, whose ends had been split and sharpened, became the writing tool of choice until the development of the steel dipping pen in the early 1800s. Steel pens, which used steel tips called nibs, did not require the frequent sharpening that quill pens did. However, they still needed to be dipped in an ink bottle because of course they did not contain their own ink. Even as the steel pen was gaining in popularity, attempts to design a more practical writing instrument were being made. These efforts eventually resulted in one of the most popular writing tools still used today, the glamorous fountain pen. Now apparently, a New York insurance agent produced the first practical fountain pen in 1884. While both the quill and steel pens had to be dipped in ink, the fountain pen was the first to hold its own ink within a self-contained reservoir. Now, because of its practicality and durability, the fountain pen became the most popular writing instrument and remained so until the development of the ballpoint pen in 1938. So, let's dig a little deeper and go back to the beginning. Abu Tamim was the fourth Fatimid Caliph and 14th Ismaili Imam and reigned from 953 to 975. He is also credited for having commissioned the invention of the first fountain pen. Now, Abu Tamim demanded a pen which would not stain his clothes or his hands and was provided with a pen which held ink in a reservoir. It has been recorded. We wish to construct a pen which can be used for writing without having recourse to an ink holder and whose ink will be contained inside it. A person can fill it with ink and write whatever he likes. The writer can put it in his sleeve or anywhere he wishes, and it will not stain, nor will any drop of ink leave out of it. The ink will flow only when there is an intention to write. We are unaware of anyone previously ever constructing a pen such as this, and an indication of penetrating wisdom to whoever contemplates it and realizes its exact significance and purpose. I exclaimed, is this possible? He replied, it is possible if God so wills. Now, unfortunately, no details of the construction or mechanism of the operation of this pen are known and no examples have survived. The Romans developed a form of writing where they scribed into thin sheets of wax on wooden tablets. They used a metal stylus. And when they no longer needed the writing, they rubbed it out with the flat end of the stylus. Now a stylus, plural styluses or styli, is a writing utensil or a small tool for some form of marking or shaping. Now some top facts and evolution of the stylus. Now, now bear with me, this will blow your mind. In the sound recording industry, 
A stylus is a phonograph or gramophone needle used to play back sound on gramophone records, as well as to record the sound indentations on the master record. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Uh, we use iTunes nowadays, so uh, let's keep it current, back into the 21st century. Modern day devices, such as phones, can often be used with, have you guessed it yet? A stylus to accurately navigate through menus, send messages, etc. Today, the term stylus often refers to an input tool, usually used with touchscreen enabled devices, such as tablets and PCs, to sometimes accurately navigate interface elements. This also prevents smearing the screen with oils from one's fingers. Ugh. Now let's hear from the experts. I'm David Titterington. I'm the head of retail for the Pen Shop Group. Um, the Pen Shop is uh, originally owned by a company called T&G Allen. Uh, it's 155 years old, started as a stationer's up in Newcastle upon Tyne in the UK. I actually do all of the buying for the pens, as well as looking after the 25 stores that we have across the United Kingdom. Uh, so I'm responsible for all of the people in the stores and, and what goes on in the stores, as well as actually sourcing the product for us to sell. The fountain pen dates back quite a long time. Um, originally, the first true fountain pen was uh, invented in the late 19th century. Uh, but still some of the early fountain pens had to be kept vertical because there was no drawdown mechanism in them to control the ink flow. Um, that problem was solved uh, towards the end of, of the 19th century and that then gives a proper fountain pen that you can fill with ink, you can put in a briefcase, you can take anywhere so that it negates the need to have a bottle of ink and a dip system to, to be able to write. About 5,000 years ago, the Egyptians invented papyrus to be able to write on, and they actually wrote on the papyrus with reeds. It was a fundamental change to writing when papyrus was invented, because it meant that as modern languages came to the fore, people started to write from left to right on a page, whereas any sort of writing that had to be carved in stone, because more people are right-handed, they would actually have to have the chisel in the left hand and the hammer in the right, and therefore, languages um, in those days used to go from the right hand side to the left. Uh, so the invention of papyrus had a fundamental impact on the way we actually write and, and read and record in books today. Later on, um, as the Europeans started to put languages down on paper, um, they, they started to do that with quills rather than with, with any other form of um, read. And the, the quills gave a, a, a difference that the person who actually shaved the quill could actually make the shape of the quill to suit their hand in terms of the thickness of the point that they wrote with. In 1932, um, Ken Parker, who was the son of, uh, of uh, the original owner of the Parker Company, wanted to produce a really premium fountain pen and that they, they decided to change the mechanism from a simple bladder which had a stick on the side to move the bladder to put the ink in and out of the pen to actually have a volumatic system and that was basically a diaphragm inside the pen that when you pressed a button it created a vacuum which sucked the ink into the pen rather like taking a deep breath out and a deep breath in the ink would go into the pen um, and that became a standard for Parker during the 1930s right into the 1950s. Um, at the, the start of the Second World War the biro had been invented by Laszlo Biro in Hungary and the British government took the patent for it and there was a huge surge in sales in ballpoint pens during the, the, the war. Indeed one of the manufacturers, AT Cross, actually produced a pen specifically for the military that would sit into the uh, uniform better and not fall loose when they were at, on active service. Um, and the, the other thing to remember about a, a, a biro or a ballpoint pen as we would now describe it is that they last a lot longer than uh, a fountain pen would would work with ink before it would need to be refilled. So that made them very, very popular. A dip pen tends to be a nib that's basically fastened to a stick. And it's quite a long nib and it uses a very, very thick ink with a very high surface tension. So it sticks to the nib so that it allows you to write for a few sentences before it needs to be dipped again. A fountain pen is fundamentally different. It uses a much thinner ink and it works on a system by when the nib is pressed onto the paper, air is let into the chamber to allow the ink to come down onto the nib, down the tines to the iridium point to be able to write. Probably one of the most interesting facts about the fountain pen is that if you look at the way 
technology changes the world that we live in. If you go back to when electricity was first discovered and was harnessed, it took about 70 years to invent an electric motor. In the 1920s, it took only 25 years after splitting the atom to create a nuclear reactor that was capable of generating power. But it's taken 5,000 years to produce a fountain pen nib from the, from the time when we, we first were able to write on papyrus. And that's because it's actually very, very scientific and uses a lot of scientific principles in terms of harnessing the surface tension of the ink, creating a vacuum, allowing the air pressure to allow the ink to flow to, to the nib point. And that probably would be the most interesting thing about it. The future of the fountain pen is really, really strong. The luxury manufacturers, they use fine materials. Some of the products are really quite expensive, but they are very, very beautiful. Some of it really should be described as jewellery that writes. Um, but in, in all cases with, with, with fine writing instruments, they are very much a fashion statement. People like to be seen with an expensive pen in the pocket. It's a, it, it is a fashion statement. Um, and one of the things that we always say in our business is that unlike a computer, a fountain pen never did anything you didn't want it to do. The big impact that the Middle East has had on writing is the fact that when they decided to use papyrus to make a form of paper to write upon, it changed what we did forever in terms of the fact that you could now write down in a way that you couldn't before, that you, you, you just needed ink and, and a device to put the ink to the paper or to the papyrus in those days. That, that's had a profound impact, as I said at the beginning, on the way modern languages are written in terms of being written from left to right on the page. I don't suppose anybody actually thought of that when they decided that they could write on papyrus, but that is you know, the, the biggest thing that, that, that has happened, because if you look at hieroglyphs, hieroglyphs are read in the same way. My name is Ricky Bamado. I'm the assistant manager of the pen shop in our Leadenhall branch um, and if I can say I've been a pen expert for the past decade. I started work for the company when I was 20. So I've worked for the company for almost 10 years now. The most important um, sort of procedures that you need to have with your fountain pen is you have to clean them every uh, couple of months I would recommend. Never lend it to anyone because it can actually, we have found some pens you get used to um, writing with your specific handwriting. So if you lend it to someone, it can change that. Uh, when carrying it, always keep it in your pocket in an upright position so um, the ink doesn't dry out. And if you are to sort of avoid the um, unexpected uh, by dropping your pen, always have your cap posted on the back of the pen so if it does fall, chances are that it's probably going to fall on the lid and the actual uh, nib and you won't break it. I'm quite, quite um, positive and I do feel that the fountain pen has got um, a long way to go. Um, we, we're seeing more exotic materials come into production of the fountain pen. Um, we, we are having a, a few digital pens as well, but the fountain pen is more special in its form. Uh, and the industry itself um, is anticipated to be roughly $19 billion a year worldwide. So we will have uh, fountain pens surely in the near future. My favorite type of pen would really depend on the occasion I'm using it for. Uh, as well as um, whether I'm going to use a fountain pen on that occasion, whether it's a rollerball, whether if it's a ballpoint. I'm not really into pencils because I, I like to have a proper feel of fountain pen. But, but out of the four technologies, my fountain pen is the favourite one. I do write with fountain pens. Do you own a fountain pen? A what? No. Yep. No, I don't have a fountain pen. <laughs> I don't have a fountain pen. Yes, I have. Do you know what a fountain pen is? Yeah. <laughs> no. Fountain pen? Yeah. No, 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 no. I don't know. What is this? I don't know what it means. I have no idea. Uh, uh, I think yes, yeah. Do you have a pen on you right now? Yeah. <laughs> it's a normal pen. No, I don't think so. No. No, I don't have any. Yeah. Black or black pen? Yeah.
Writing developed very early in Asia. By 12,000 BC or earlier, there were cheap, readily available writing surfaces that were preferred. It's been said that the first Chinese writing was painted with a brush or inscribed with a knife on wood, bamboo, and even flat animal bone. In Southeast Asia and India, the most common writing surface was palm leaves, which were widespread and were in use by the 7th century. To write on these leaves, scribes used a stylus, quite similar to the ones by the Romans mentioned earlier, but it was bronze, with a sharp point on one end for inscribing, and letters and a flat blade on the other end for scraping the surface of the leaf smooth. As with Chinese writing, the inscribed letters would be filled with ink after writing to make it more eligible. Let's go back to the beginning, when the invention of the biro was a thought that would rock the writing world. Biro was born in Budapest, Hungary in 1899 into a Jewish family. And the Budapest International Fair in 1931 didn't know what hit them when he presented the first production of the ballpoint pen. And this is how he created this commodity. Apparently, whilst working as a journalist in Hungary, he noticed that the ink used in newspaper printing dried quickly, leaving the paper dry and smudge free. He tried using the same ink in a fountain pen, but found that it would not flow into the tip as it was too thick. So, the obvious move was to speak to his brother the chemist, and he developed a new tip consisting of a ball that was free to turn in a socket. And as it turned, it would pick up ink from a cartridge and then roll to deposit it on the paper. Biro invented the invention in Paris, 1938. Voila! Now close your eyes and imagine. You're a prestigious insurance broker and about to sign a big contract. Smart suit, hair slicked, pen in hand. May I add a new fountain pen considered far more stylish than a cumbersome dip pen and inkwell. Clients around the table waiting for this pinnacle moment when bang, the pen refuses to write and black inky leaks everywhere onto the precious document. Horrified, you quickly race back to your office for another contract. But alas, a sneaky competing broker has made the lunge and closed the deal. Imagined it well? Well, unfortunately, this is what apparently happened to Lewis Edson Waterman insurance broker who subsequently invented the first proper fountain pen. He invented the capillary feed in fountain pens, now universally used, that allows for ink to flow freely. Now determined to never again suffer such humiliation, Waterman began to make fountain pens in his brother's workshop. Can you see the theme here? We must keep ideas within the family. Lewis Waterman used the capillary principle which allowed air to induce a steady and even flow of ink. He christened his pen the regular, decorated it with wooden accents and obtained a patent for it in 1884. In his first year of operation, Waterman sold his handmade pens out of the back of his cigar shop. He guaranteed the pens for five years and advertised in a trendy magazine, The Review of Review and the orders, of course, filtered in. Fountain pens are now available in a variety of styles, offering unique features. Each is compromised of the same basic components, the nib or point, the barrel, which holds the ink, reservoir, and the cap, which fits over the nib of the pen to protect it from damage. But of course, whatever the claims of yesteryear, ballpoint pens may have replaced the fountain pen as the universal writing tool Fountain pens will continue to be popular with collectors, as well as those who desire a more elegant and sophisticated writing tool. Now, thanks for watching. If you believe something has been unfairly claimed, then get your comments in, or just add your frustration to our Facebook page. But now you're free. You're free to do something thoroughly worthwhile with your time, and get your stylus out. Ta-ra.
What was your first question? Pen or computer? Pen. A what? 